Good morning. How are you guys this morning? Summer's almost over. <laughs> Says all the parents. <laughs> are y'all ready for your kids to go back to school? Oh, yeah. Aww. Allison, I never wanted school to start again. I wanted you to stay with me forever. That's not that, that's a little bit of truth. Actually, I really did love summers. I loved having my kids home. But it does come time where it's time to go back, kick them back out. All right. Welcome. I'm glad you guys are here. I am Kathleen Parks. My husband, super, super, duper awesome husband, Joe and I, have the honor of being campus pastors here at New Life Church Northwest. And so super glad to be here with you guys this morning. Super happy to be in some air conditioning. I have to say that. Um, so we're starting a new thing. You guys saw in the announcements. I'm going to talk about it just a little bit. The 21 days of prayer starts tomorrow. Listen carefully, listen carefully. Out at the Welcome Center, on our website, online, there's some different places that you can get the prayer guide. I want all of you to get a prayer guide because I really believe that the t next 21 days are going to be hugely pivotal and beneficial for every single one of us. It's going to take us through 21 different di 21 days of different prayers, looking specifically at some scriptures, doing some observation, doing some different things together, really getting direction from Jesus. I, I really, really believe this is going to be huge. We're going to talk about it a little bit more throughout the message, but, but hear me now. I want you to get this before you leave. Deal? Deal. All right. All right. So, Along with our 21 days of prayer, we're starting a new message series called In the Gap. Um, and we're going to kind of talk about, um, oh, those, those gaps, those things that maybe feel a little bit cracked in our lives, maybe just feel flat out broken. Can you guys picture, are you guys super glue people? I'm a super glue person. So imagine like a plate hits the floor, right? And you get your super glue and gee, and put your plate back together. Our prayers are kind of like super glue. They take things that are broken, they take things that are damaged, and they, and they put them back together. They, they, they bond them back together. And so, um, and so really over the next 21 days, we're really going to be focusing on, on the power of prayer to be that bonding agent that brings things back together in, in self, in health, in relationships and finances and all of those things. And so it's going to be really, really fantastic. And, and I really, truly am very, very excited about it. And so um, as we're doing this uh, this series, this In the Gap series, we're, we're really going to be pursuing growing in our intimacy with God and in our relationship with God and in faith, growing in faith. We're going to exercise our faith muscles and get them nice and big and bulky. Sound good? So how many of you would say, please say, if you have to lie to me, lie to me, it's okay, because I don't want to be the only one that says yes to this. How many of you would say that you absolutely believe in the power of prayer, in the way that God answers prayers, you believe that he hears and he responds to your prayers, but you probably, honestly, really don't pray enough? Is there anybody else out there? Thank you. Even if you lied, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I think that there's I think that there's a couple of reasons why we do that. I mean, think about why if we know God listens and we know he responds, why do we not pray as often as we should? I think there's a couple of reasons, so I'm going to go over them with you. Number 1, I think we lack confidence, which is is really kind of funny, but I think that we tend to go, am I doing it right? Am I praying right? Is it okay for me to ask this? Is it okay for me to say that? And we really think that there's like a right or wrong way to talk to Jesus. And so we don't come with confidence and we don't come with faith. And, and we even question if we should be coming and we should be talking and we should be asking. Does that make sense? Do you all agree with that? Yeah? Yeah? I think another one, okay, lie to me again. Just, we're just, this is going to be our theme today. <laughs> just lie to me again. Do any of you start to pray and sometimes fall asleep? I think it's the peace of Jesus. That's what I think is what's happening. <laughs> I think it's just peace. Um, like if I'm laying down in my bed and I start to pray, tap out, we're done. Like I have to, there's, I, there's different ways that I, that I do a much better job, but man, if I'm laying down, it is over. 
And then sometimes I think we have really good intentions. Like I, I really have things I want to talk to Jesus about. I really, I want to tell him thank you for this. And I want to, and I want to ask him to enlighten me on this. And I want to ask for help with this. And like, I have all of these great intentions and I go and I'm like, I'm like, okay, God, thank you so much for the miracle that you just did in, oh, miracles. And then my mind starts going, like somebody sent me a text earlier today and they said there's things going on in their lives and they need a miracle and I didn't respond to them. So now I stop and I grab my phone and I'm texting, you know, texting that person back because I didn't text them back when I should have texted them back. And then a notification pops up on my phone and then I go and I read that notification. And then like 15 minutes later, I'm watching a little boy say to his mother, listen, Linda, listen, listen. Do y'all do that? And I'm like, dang, I was praying, and now I'm like surfing YouTube. Like, what's even happening right now? So I, you guys do it too, right? It's not just me. You guys do it too. Okay, how about when you're in a place where people are praying, like maybe you're in a small group or maybe you're um, at a prayer meeting or you're at something, and all you can think of is, oh, Jesus, please don't let them call on me to pray out loud. I don't want to be the one praying out loud. Or you're totally fine with the idea of praying out loud until, like, the dude next to you does, like, prophet prayers. And then you're like, I can't say a word and I'll sound like an idiot compared to what he just said. And we compare, right? We start comparing those things. Am I the only one that has those frustrations? I'm not, right? I'm not. Here's the deal. Over the next four weeks and throughout the month of August, what we want to do is really let God show us how to pray with power, with passion, with expectation, in faith as we're praying, getting real and getting honest with him. I want, I want to kind of point out today, um, I think a couple of, of prayer mistakes we, we all make. Two big ones. Are we ready? Do you have your outline? Here we go. Two big mistakes I think we all make in prayer. Number one, our prayers are way too small. And number two, our prayers are often way too general. I wonder sometimes if God gets a little bit frustrated with me, with us, because because of the smallness and how general our prayers are. And he's going, come on, talk to me, give me something. And it's kind of like this. We say things like this. Oh, God. Thank you so much for this day, and um, God, would you just would you just bless my family? And God, would you just bless so and so? They they really need you. And like seriously, God's like, okay, that's easy. Give me something, right? Like for real. If if you drive out of here today and you go to a structure that has four walls and a roof on it on, on the top of it, if you have a pillow to put your head on tonight when you go to sleep. If you have this little thing in your kitchen where you open it up and clean water just comes out of that thing, you are so blessed. You are so blessed. Like top 10% in the world blessed, people. And we're saying, oh, God, just bless us. And he's going, oh, that was easy. Done. What you got? Give me something else. Give me something else. And then we do things like, oh, God, you know, um, if you would just, just be with me today. And he's like, my word says I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. That's done. Give me something. Give me something. He wants us to really talk to him, to be specific. Say specific. Specific. Say it five times really fast. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do it. <laughs> Somebody too. So I heard it. To be really specific, to ask big prayers because he wants to show off. He wants to show you that he's listening, that he cares, and that he can do whatever you're asking for. I can remember years and years and years ago, um, uh, December 1995. It was our first. It was our first Christmas with Jessica. She was like nine years, nine years, nine months old. And don't laugh at me, Sammy. I heard that she was like nine months old. And, um, and I don't remember the exact circumstances, but I know this. I know we were in church. It was a Wednesday night, and there was a, there was a special offering being requested. And it wasn't like a do it right now, but it was a pray about it. 
pray about it. Ask God if he would want you to participate in this. And then, um, and then by December 31st, if you could do this. I don't, again, I don't remember exactly what it was. Let me tell you something. We were so broke. We were so, so, so poor. We really, really, really were. Like we hadn't, we didn't have two nickels to rub together for real, for real, not even playing. And, um, in fact, if you looked at our budget, somehow in the numbers, we were $100 under every month. But somehow, bills all got paid and food was on the table. Like, I don't know how God did it, but it was miraculous stuff that was going on. And so we're in this Wednesday night, and we just paused to pray about it. And I really felt like God impressed on my heart, you're going to give. And so I looked over at Joe, or he looked over at me, basically. We were like, we're supposed to give. And I go, I have a number in my head. And he goes, I have a number in my head. And I go, okay, on three, we'll say it out loud. Ready? One, two, three, hundred dollars. People, hear me when I'm telling you. It's like saying to me right now, can you give me a check for 500,000? No, I cannot. I did not have a hundred dollars to give, period, end of story. And so um, at some point in that month, we had been invited to come out to a church in Taft and to do stuff with their children while they were having their, at their annual Christmas party. And so we go out there, and we did our stuff with the kids, and, um, and the pastor comes in at the end, and he hands us an envelope, and then he does it. Oh, hold on. And he, and he turns and he walks away, and we're like, Okay. And then he comes back, envelope has been opened, and then closed back again, and he hands us the envelope and says, thank you so much for coming here. Now, I'm telling you, we knew we were going to make a little bit of money when we went to do that, and we were really excited because whatever money we made, that was going to be Jessica's Christmas because we literally had nothing. And so we were super excited, like, what is it going to be? And so we get in the car. We didn't get very far down the road. We could not wait to get home. We were in the car, and we're like, open the envelope! And so we open the envelope, and there's a check in there for $25 that had been written a couple of days earlier and behind it there's another check that had just been handwritten how much was it hundred dollars hundred dollars jessica's christmas money i bought the cutest little kitchen thing to play with and our offering that we had said god we know that you're saying to do this you're you're gonna have to do it because there's no way we can make it happen it was bold and it was specific and god answered that prayer. That's what he wants to do with us. He wants us to ask specific prayers so he can be moved to specific actions because he wants to show himself to us. Does that make sense, guys? He wants to show himself to us. He's excited for us to come to him. The next 21 days are going to be amazing. I am super excited to see what's going to happen. We want to have big faith, faith filled prayers, specific, passionate prayers that move our God to do amazing, miraculous things. Let me give you an example. Do y'all know who Martin Luther is? Like 1500s Martin Luther, the guy who um, what, did the Reformation, the Reformation of the church, Martin Luther, back in the 1500s. He had, um, he had a friend who was assistant. His name was Frederick Myconius, Frederick Myconius. And, um, and Frederick was a huge part of assisting Martin in the midst of the church um, Reformation. And they were not in the same uh, town when this happened, but at one point, true story, true story, Frederick got really sick, like super, super sick. And, and he was at the end. And, you know, in our modern days, we can get in a car. If we get the call, it's time to say goodbye, right? We can get in the car, or we can get on FaceTime, or we can get on Skype, or we can do whatever and, and talk to people. They couldn't do that back then. I've had that call. Have y'all had that call? Too many times. Um, So he wrote Martin a a letter because he wanted to tell him goodbye. And he basically said, and I paraphrase because obviously he didn't speak like this, but he said, "Mm, this is it. I'm really sick. I only have a little bit of time left, but I want you to know how much I love you. Here's what Martin did. Martin wrote a letter back. Now this takes faith. And this is bold, because sometimes I might be bold enough to ask Jesus for something, but I'm not going to tell everybody, because if it doesn't happen, I don't want... Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're just like, it's your secret prayer. Because you don't want to tell everybody, because then if it doesn't happen, then, you know, whatever. Was I not faithful enough? Was I not... You know, we start questioning our things. He was very, very bold, and this is what he wrote. Let me read it to you. 
He says, I command you, I love it, I command you in the name of God to live. Think of that. That is bold. I command you in the name of God to live because I still have need of you in the work of reforming the church. The Lord, hear this, the Lord will never let me hear that you are dead, but will permit you to survive me. For this I am praying because I seek only to glorify the name of God. Boom. That's specific, right? That's pretty bold. And he put it in paper. Uh uh. Mm mm. No. This is what this is what I'm gonna ask the Lord for, and this is why. Frederick gets the letter, reads the letter, his faith is ignited. There's a miraculous healing, and the man lived for six more years. And do you know when he died? What did Martin Luther tell him? I will the Lord will not let me hear that you are dead. He died two months after Martin Luther died. Is that incredible? Like that is serious, bold, boom, specific prayers and God answered them very very specifically that is what we need to learn to do is to tap into the power of that over the next 21 days tapping in to the power of God and one of the ways that we're going to learn to do that is we're going to learn from the apostle Paul the apostle Paul was very specific when he wrote letters to the townspeople that he wrote letters to he many of them started with prayers maybe all of them I should look at that started with prayers that were very, very specific. And so we're going to learn from Martin Luther, excuse me, from Paul, the Apostle Paul, how to pray specifically and to expect that modeling after how he prayed, those specific, those bold, those faith-filled prayers, that we will be changed by them in the same way that the people that he wrote those letters to were changed by them. Okay, so here we go. The first one we're going to look at is found in Ephesus. It's in chapter 3. Um, Paul wrote this at about 60 AD. He's writing from a Roman prison. He's writing to the people, the churches in Ephesus. And chapter 3, verses 14 and 15 He started his prayer this way. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Now listen. When you pray, when you pray, pray in whatever physical way is most comfortable for you, right? So I love, I like to walk and pray. I love to come in here and walk and pray when it's not a hundred and zillion degrees. But I love to come in here and do that. I love to walk and pray. It's great. Um, if it's if it's sitting, if it's kneeling, if it's driving, just don't close your eyes. Just, you know, whatever way you want to pray, pray. But I think that there's something very powerful here, and I don't want us to miss it. Because in this, in this era, Paul's a Jewish man, and in this era, the way that they prayed, the traditional, normal, this is how you do it, prayers is they would stand and they would and they would um, lift they would have palms lifted up toward heaven that's how they would pray you hear what Paul said there right he said I kneel I'm going to kneel before God I believe that kneeling is very powerful we just did it together there's something about kneeling that says God I'm weak but you're strong There's something in kneeling that says, I submit to you, God. I submit. There's something in kneeling that is reverent and respectful. And there's a power that comes in kneeling, in that acknowledgement when you're on your knees. So here's what we're going to do. Listen. Over the next 21 days, everybody's going to get their guide, right? Oh, that was so weak. Everybody's going to get their guide, right? Yes. I want you to put it on your bedside table. I want you to set your alarm just a couple of minutes earlier. Just a couple. Stop hitting snooze. That's for some of you. And when you wake up in the morning, I want you to get on your knees. For some of you, medically, that can't happen, but metaphorically. Okay. I want you to get on your knees, and I want you to open it up to day one. Put on your bifocals because the print's really small. (laughs) And I want you to work your way through the print. It's only a couple minutes. It really is only a couple minutes. On your knees. And we're going to do it together, yes? 
We're going to do it together. And then this is what we're going to do. I think we're going to challenge each other. I think we're going to hold each other accountable. We need, when we see each other, we need to say, how was your prayer this morning? How did you like that scripture? What did it speak to you? And we're going to ask each other because we're going to hold each other accountable. And, and if you forgot to pray that morning, don't still be afraid. Because sometimes we'll go, uh, I can't ask so-and-so if she prayed because she's going to say, how about you? And I didn't do it this morning. Holding ourselves and, and each other accountable. We're going to do it together, right? Because I believe at the end of these 21 days, there's going to be transformation. And there's going to be miracles. Miracles and breakthroughs in some of your lives that you've been waiting for for a long time. So we're going to do it together, kneeling before God in prayer. Ephesians, same chapter, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says this. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your what? In your inner being. He's in you. That he would strengthen you through, your, through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches. Paul knew that when he was praying, he's talking to God out of his glorious riches. This is creator of the universe owns all, God. And he's saying that out of your glorious riches, because we are very limited, but God is unlimited. Philippians 4 says, my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches. There it is again. And he said, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Why did he pray that? Look at what it says right here, because I want you to catch this. There's a pattern. I pray, and then he says what he has to say. And then he says this, so that. I pray so that. He says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Over the next few weeks, we're going to learn how to pray so that. We're going to pray specific, bold, faith-filled prayers. Why? So that God can break through in some of the areas of our lives we've been needing breakthrough for a long time. So that God will be glorified. So that we will be strengthened in our innermost being. So that. That's what we're going to be doing, guys. Let me ask you this. He says, I pray that God may strengthen you with power. That word power comes from the word dunamis. It is the word we get for dynamite. That's power, right? Explosive dynamite. That is powerful. That's power, power, power. Why did he say, though, that we needed that power? Why did he say we needed that power? I want you to just pause on that for a minute. We need divine power. We need it. We need it in our lives. We need it in our homes. We need it in our families. We need it in our finances. We need explosive God power. And prayer is how we plug into that. How many of you guys have a cell phone? You better all raise your hand because you all got a cell phone. Who's got a cell phone? What happens when you don't plug it in? Right? I have, a, um, I have an electric car, not a hybrid. If I did it again, I love it, but I would do a hybrid so it can kick over to the gas when you're low on electricity because my dear, wonderful, sweet, fantastic husband took my car out on Thursday night and forgot to plug it in. And so on Friday, my dear, sweet friend Sammy had to take me to work and, and then drive the car home so we could plug that puppy in because otherwise we was going to be in trouble. And so Sammy is from Scotland, so here's what you got to know about Sammy. Her phone, uh-huh, uh-huh. Her phone does not work unless she's on Wi-Fi. So is her phone going to work in the car? Nope, ain't going to work in the car. My address is a fairly new address, so a lot of the maps don't pop my address. And so I live straight down the street, straight down the street on Callaway. And, but right when you cross over 7th Standard, that becomes Shafter. I found out on Thursday that Sammy just puts in Shafter in the navigation thing in the car, thinking that's going to take her home. And I'm like, Sammy, I don't really live in the city of Shafter. She's like, ah, when I get by there, I know where I'm going. That's what she said. Guess what happened on Friday? Sammy ended up in the middle of fields in the middle of nowhere and had no clue 
not a clue where she was. And she looks down at my little electric car and it says she's got five miles. She can't call anybody because she didn't have Wi-Fi. She doesn't know where she is. She's in the middle of fields, nowhere close to anything that she's ever seen. And she's stuck. She doesn't even know if she's going the right direction. So in 103 degree heat, she just turns the car off because she's only got five miles left and she doesn't know where to, she's cracking up laughing over there because she doesn't know where to go. And then she lost her little self and she just cried because she was lost and had nowhere to go and didn't know how to get there and was running out of power. And a police officer pulls up, which scared the tar out of her. Police officer pulls up and she's crying. I don't know where to go and I, I don't have any power left. Okay, where are you going? So he figures out where she's going and he says, You're five and a half miles away. How many miles do I have left in my car? He says, You're five and a half miles away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to escort you home. Yeah, right? And he's, I love policemen. And he turns on his lights and women. He turns on his lights and he escorts her home and she makes it home. How many of us are not? Yeah. We're so glad you got home, Sammy. How many of us are running on a low power supply and we don't know where to go and we don't know how to get there and we're freaking out? We got to tap in to that power. That is God's power. He wants to lead us. He's willing to lead us. We got to plug in. Paul continues in verses 17 through 19, and he says, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the what? Say it louder. Power. Together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how the love of Christ and to know that this love surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all of the fullness of God why did he want us to have power so that we could grasp the love of God why do we have to have power to grasp that because it's completely different than the way that we love right our love can be a little bit conditional sometimes somebody got to work for a little bit his love is so completely different. It is all-knowing, ever-seeing, all-forgiving, overwhelming, overcoming, everything. And we need his power in our innermost being to even begin to understand how deep that love is. And look, if you're a parent here, teach that to your children. Because if they can begin to understand the love of God, and that they're rooted and grounded in him, and that they have their approval in him, they won't need to seek approval from everybody else all around them. Does that make sense? That was a sidebar, but that's a good one. Love is not what God does, it's who he is. Y'all know that, right? It's who he is. It is the essence of who he is. There is nothing that you can do that would cause him to love you any more or any less than right now in this exact moment because it's about his, his love. And so when you can begin to understand because of his power, that love, then you can handle the bad report from your doctor. Then you can handle the responsibility of being a single parent then you can handle it when you're rejected by somebody that you desperately love. You can handle the setback at your job. I believe that over the next 21 days, I do. I don't care where you are in your relationship with the Lord. I believe that he wants to take you to new and exciting and transformational places. I believe it. He wants to draw you in to a place of intimacy that you've never experienced, no matter how intimate you are with him. We can't even we can't even begin to just drop put a drop in the bucket of how much he loves us, no matter how much we think we know. We don't. 
And I believe that he wants to reveal himself to us in a very profound way over the next 21 days. Let me tell you about this gentleman named Charles Finney. Charles Finney was an evangelist back in the 1800s. He had a very deep encounter with God, and here's what he said. He wrote it out. He said, The Holy Spirit descended upon me in a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. And I could feel the impression like a wave of electricity going through and through me. Indeed, it seemed to come, listen, listen, don't miss it. It seemed to come in waves and waves of liquid love. For I could not express it in any other way. It seemed like the very breath of God. I believe that God wants to meet you in that same way that he met with Charles Finney. In ways that you can't even explain. You've heard from him. You've been inspired by him. He's changed you. Growing in a depth and a deepness with him that is so personal. I believe that's what God wants to do for the next 20 days. Ephesians 20 and 21 says this, Now to him who is able to do how much? Immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Immeasurably more. Listen, you guys are part of immeasurably more right now, and you probably don't even know it. But 30 years ago, in 1988, 45 people who attended New Life Church came together every Friday morning for three years. And they asked very bold, very bold things of the Lord. And they said, Lord, take our 45 and multiply our 45. Let us be a beacon of hope in this community. We want to reach thousands and we want to send, we want to send and we want to send leaders out that will go across the nation, that will go across the globe and they will change the world. 45 people. Look at you. Look at you. There's hundreds of you in this room right now. There's going to be six to 800 in this building, to, in this, on this property today. 45 people. And this is one of six campuses. And we've sent out hundreds of leaders across the globe. Those were bold and specific prayers coming from 45 people. Would you agree? You are part of the immeasurably more. God wants to do immeasurably more in your lives immeasurably more. And he can. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? If he did it in 1988, he can do it in 2018. Would you agree? God can do it. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, to him be the glory throughout all generations forever and ever. Friends, don't pray small, general, non-specific prayers. What is your need? What have you been hoping beyond hope for? Ask him. Just ask him. The next three weeks are powerful. God's going to show up and he's going to show off. And he's excited to do it. Can I sense the anticipation in my spirit so strong? He's been waiting for you.